Hello everyone, it is Caitlin and today we are making our morning accessories, our bonnet, veil, handkerchief, and fan. Alright, we're going to start with a bonnet. So, I already have a bonnet. I do not have any buckram to make a new bonnet, which is what I was planning on, just, just to make a new bonnet. So, I went back and I do have two later 1860s bonnets. Um, a black one and a blue straw. Well, a black one's obviously going to work better for morning, so that's what I chose. Now, it is a fancy, shiny silk taffeta, so it's not going to work for morning. However, the crepe that I'm using to recover this is kind of sheer, and I'm trying to pull this out while we're talking. Um, I figured I would have to have something black on underneath just to kind of cover and make sure everything's like opaque and you don't see the buckram underneath. I think that's what I'm getting at. So I figured this is already here. Let's go ahead and use this. And that way when I don't need a morning bonnet anymore, I just take the crepe off and I can just use it again as a regular bonnet. And I so rarely do later 1860s that, I mean the last time I wore a later 1860s, this bonnet, it's probably been about four years. So obviously it's not getting used right now in its state. And if I needed another bonnet, I have the blue straw. And if I wanted a silk bonnet, I could take the crepe off. It's not a big deal. So we're going to go ahead and take off these ties. And again, we're going to leave the um, silk on there. I haven't quite decided. This is like more of an 1864 bonnet. And I want to say the curtain is obsolete by 67. We might be taking the curtain off. But I need to do a little bit more research before uh, committing to that. They're actually hiding a flaw in the bonnet when I made this. My buckram wasn't straight, so there's like a little dip here that I could never get out. So I actually used the trimmings to hide that. So we're going to hide that again with something else. I'm not sure with what. Maybe like a band or something, but we need to make sure we hide that. And possibly hide the thing in the back too now, because that wasn't there originally, but now it's there. So we're going to accommodate that. I don't feel like taking this whole bonnet apart, but this white lining is not going to work. So we're going to have to recover, uh, probably put crepe or, um, I have an original bonnet that has a dark brown polished cotton lining. I probably have some dark brown cotton and we'll just line it in that over the white lining. <laughs> All right. So did a little bit of research, cut out the pattern pieces. We'll talk about those in just a second. We are going to take the curtain off. There actually is a later 1860s um, morning bonnet. I think it's a half morning bonnet because it's only trimmed in the crepe. It's not fully crepe, which leads me to believe that it's like not entirely that like, you have know, a deep morning one. Anyway, so it has just this little part at the back. So I decided, you know, let's just go ahead and copy that. And there we go. So I think first step, I have the back here, which just needs a gathering thread all the way around. This is the part that goes over this. Let me go ahead and pin this together. Alright, so I have the gathering thread run across this. We're just going to pin it in a couple places. Distribute gathers. And then we're going to just sew that down. This can get sewn down really well later. So I'm not terribly concerned about it right now. Alright. At the very least, I have that. At the very least, we have it tacked in now. Okay. Let's put this part back on. Or on. It's not back on. Alright. So there's my center. Let's turn this inside out. First, let me mark the center. I didn't think about doing that. I marked the center on the bonnet. I need to mark the center here. That would be the most logical thing, now wouldn't it? Just a minute, we're going to pull that down to make it all nice and pretty. Don't want to be a little too much right there. That'll work. Okay, where'd my needle go? Here, 
Actually, we're gonna need to cut the brown part of this first because I don't need that white that might poke through just a little bit. And I just wanna make sure that we're covered in all senses of the word. All right, so we are getting there. I have the lining pinned in, I'm sewing it around. So all I did since we last met, y'all saw me sew that part on, um, or the brim on. I did the same thing on the underside and whipped these edges together so that they're, you know, closed. Um, and then pinned in the lining. So we're sewing in the lining now. I went ahead and also pinned in the top part of the bonnet as well, but I haven't sewn it yet. So we're just gonna, nice pretty little stitches, little thing, you know, what we need to be doing to attach all of this. It's black on black on black. It's getting a little hard to see. Alright, bonnet technically covered. I'm just going to put in this little curtain type situation. What the original does. Okay, I'm gonna pinch these ends and stick them in here. I'm gonna hide the edge with the ties. I think up here is fine. Okay, and across here, I'm just going to not really braid them because there's only two of them. But, you know, just weave them in and out. Okay, something more like that. Okay, I'll take all the pins out in just a second. That's about where the other one ended. Okay. Alright, I can live with that. So I'm going to sew all that down. And we'll be done with the bonnet. Let's go ahead and cut the veil. And I think we're going to sew it together tomorrow. But we'll go ahead and cut it. I think that looks pretty nice. I think we're going to cut the veil. Uh, I think I decided it's about a yard long, 36 inches. And it's not terribly wide, maybe about 45 inches. So I'm going to leave it the width it is for the veil. And just like the original 1880s veil, I'm not going to do anything with the ends. I'm going to leave them raw. I am going to turn under the edge at the top to finish off that edge. All right, we're just going to hand stitch this. This is going to be, I think, the best way to do it. So. I also pinned the uh, bottom up. I did half an inch and then three inches. So the finished veil is now round 32 inches long. So I think I'm gonna sew this and then we'll put the veil on the bonnet very last. I think we'll work on the next two projects um, beforehand. So it's gonna be the handkerchief and the uh, fan, which I cannot find any extant morning fans that would have like you know crepe on them and so what I think I'm going to do is just make a black folding fan all black matte no shininess um, although probably still taffeta um, and then the one reference I have to a morning fan which is 1867 mentions that there are feathers on the morning fan so I bought a little boa and we're going to make a fan with feathers on it. I think we're going to make a regular Jenny Lynn type fan um, with feathers. And it's not going to necessarily be a morning fan. It's going to be appropriate for morning, but it's not going to have crepe on it. Um, and I, there was none more of a description, so I don't know if the fan in question in the story was uh, creped or not. But... We're going to go with not, and then I can use the fan for other instances. Alright, finishing the very last bit of the veil. 
a little uh, whip stitching again. This is the hem. This is the top part of the veil. These are actually, um, I guess, the bug collectors use them and um, display insects with them. But apparently they're really good approximations for veil pins, or hat pins, hair pins, whatever you want to call them. So, let's go ahead and figure out how this is going to go. There's a halfway point, which is roughly here. Put the excess of the pointy part inside so it's not going to you know, stab me, which I would appreciate. Just I'm going to pin into the actual ribbon bit. I think that'll help. Okay, there we go. There's our veil and our bonnet. Let's throw that back. Alright, I think we can go ahead and start working on something else. New project for the morning ensemble. We're going to make a fan. And I totally just like made the pattern up myself like a minute ago. I just pulled a piece of paper in half, put this on top to kind of see how long it needed to be, and made a ovalish fan shape. Very careful because these pieces are gonna need to be even as possible. I'm gonna find my liquid start. I think I need to make some more. Alright, while the fan bits are prepping, and there they are drying. So while we're doing that, I'm gonna go ahead and make the handkerchief. So I have here some linen, just plain old white linen, a bit smaller than I usually make my handkerchiefs. I think it's like 16 or 17 inches. Okay, it's almost 18 actually. Okay, it's bigger than I thought it was. It's smaller than I usually cut my handkerchiefs by a couple of inches, and so I just had it on hand. And I figured, you know what, we're going to put a black border on it. Let's go ahead and use a smaller piece. So I'm going to use the machine and go ahead and sew around this. I have a five inch piece of black cotton here. We're just going to sew it around the edge, miter the corners, go all the way around, um, and then we'll you know, turn it around, finish the edges, and uh, do the rest of it by hand. All right, kind of an odd angle, but here we are making a fan. So again, I have my little fan sticks. These I actually bought off Amazon. They were fully wood, and they were right about the right size. Um, there's a lot more sticks. Sorry, the dog's sitting underneath me. Uh, there's a lot more sticks than I needed um, because they had them very close together and then original antique they had them very close together like sitting like this when they were open 19th century they're going to be more like this so I'm only using like half of them um, but then I have like I just need these as well so um, starch I did not make correctly so it um, it's just sitting on there, but it's very stiff. It's stiffening things, which is what it needs to be. And on the back, it looks fine, except for a little bit of starch, which come right off. So I'm not really concerned about that. I'm using my um, the glue I use for book binding usually, which I really shouldn't be wasting on this, but I didn't feel like getting out the other glue. So we are using this. And I'm kind of just coating one side of the fan. And I'm taking a bit of the boa and ripping some feathers off and sticking them on top, pushing them down a little bit, taking a stick, putting it down, right down the center, taking my glue, making sure to get the stick all nice and wet, and then putting another little piece of fabric over top. Pressing it down. 
I'm peeling it up. That one got a lot of glue on the side. Oops. Oh well. I'm sure it'll be fine. Moving the feathers around as needed, making sure they're sort of even. Let's keep going. Lots of glue. That's a little much, but okay. The glue is also going to help with stiffening. Pull off some feathers. Stick them on the top. Spread them out. Stick so the other part sticks to the actual stick, adheres to the actual stick. Let's use a different word there. Okay, pushing that down. That can go dry. Alright, we're going to try putting a fan together. It's still somewhat wet, so I'm going to continue working on it. I'm not going to put the whole thing together, I just want to kind of stick them on here. So I have a little um, I guess for earrings when you're making jewelry, it has a little ball at the end and it's gold. So we're just going to stick all these things on here. There we go. Right. And we're going to make this into a nice little hook. Hopefully with a big enough hole that it will pop out. Hello and welcome to the couch. So I pulled up one of my old fans that we made on the channel and just to make sure I knew what I was doing when sewing this together because sometimes I get confused. But we're here and we're working on it. Um, so I have silk thread that I'm using and I have it right now on the back of the last one I just did. And I'm going to put it onto the front of this one, go down, pull on it. Get that um, feather off and get it exactly where it needs to be. I'm kind of matching it where they're not quite meeting at the top, but there's like a little bit of a gap, you can see. So that's where I'm trying to go with that, making sure that's an even gap. And go back up right next to where it came down. Go back down. Back up again. Find my needle that I lost. There we go. And back down again. And now we're ready to go to the next one. I have been taking this time to kind of make sure all my starch is off. It comes off really easily. It's just I needed the time to actually go through it, each and every individual, you know, fan leaf, and work on that. Okay. Last one. Which that's roughly even down there. down. Up. Down. And go back up and tie it off underneath here so that you don't see it because it's going to be covered with this part of the fan. Alright. We have a fan. So that's what it looks like. It's not entirely dry yet. That's the kind of blotchiness you see right now because parts of it are still wet, but I wanted to get it done, so it folds nicely, and it opens nicely, so I think I'm going to let this kind of stay out and um, dry out completely, and then we can go ahead and finish that handkerchief real quick and be done. Finishing the handkerchief. So after sewing it, I just fold it under. We're just whipping it to that very seam. There we go. We have a completed project now. I suppose it's time to go get on the dress and show everything off. All right, all dressed up. So it's been like five seconds since I filmed the ending to the Monday video. So. Uh, making the dress. So if you've not checked that one out, uh, we did make the dress on the channel. So that will be linked above. But here are some of our accessories. So fan, 
with this lovely little feathers. It's not entirely dry yet, but it's mostly dry. So I'm going to leave it out for tonight, and then it shall be completely dry tomorrow. But uh, a little bit shinier than I think it needs to be for morning. But again, this isn't really a morning fan. It's just going to be a black fan that I'm going to use this weekend because it could get hot. This Texas, we don't know what's going to happen. It could be 50. It could be 90. It's October in Texas. We don't know. And in case it is 90, I am dressed in entirely black and it is wool and I will have a veil on. So fan is going to be very, very nice. So there goes that and put that in the pocket. Probably should have added a uh, tassel to this. I'll think about that later. There we go. Handkerchief. So again, minor corners, not my thing but it is here and it's done and I got a morning handkerchief. And that's really all there is to say about the handkerchief that really isn't too much except I managed to get some of the starch on it. So we might have to wash it before the event. Uh, it looks like snot so it's not, it's you know, starch but kind of looks like it. I guess it kind of goes with the aesthetic. We'll leave it. But there's that. Oops. Ugh. I hate when I drop things in the corset. I think the dogs are outside, otherwise I'd have them get for me. Okay, here we go. I can bend over in a corset. I just don't like to. But to be fair, I don't like bending over without a corset either. I teach first grade, and I usually, even if I'm across the room from the kids, if I drop something, I'll ask one of them to come over and pick it up and hand it to me. So. If that's not laziness, I don't know what is. Let's go ahead and put our bonnet on. I did not do my full 1860s um, hair that I was going to do. A later 1860s hair because I'm lazy. But here we are, full veil and everything. Okay, let's figure out the best way to do this. Okay. a lot of black. Alright, there we go. Alright. Put the nail around. There we go. Alright. And that is the bonnet, which is probably the fanciest, most interesting part of the accessories, I would think. But, um, yeah, there it is. I'm put it over. Well, that is interesting. Okay, y'all probably can't see me at all. I can actually see a lot better in this than I thought I could. Because it looks pretty opaque. But it really isn't. It is very warm, though. Like, very warm. Just me talking is reading some heat. That's going to get very stifling. Okay. Well, and it doesn't help because like normal veils are very light and airy so they like let the air through. This is so drapey that it's not. But I think that's a reproduction issue because, let me put that back so I can talk to y'all. Well, it's bright in here. Um, but I think it's a reproduction issue because the original veiling that I have that I showed you earlier is not quite as opaque and it is very light and starchy and it moves um what would i call that airy it's airy uh, whereas this is more drapey and so i think that's more of a this fabric versus the original stuff issue as opposed to it actually being a problem in the period although you do find period references to women like fainting or getting short of breath, breath and having migraines while having the veil over probably because they're overheating because they're dressed in all black and it does sometimes get hot and you know just normal things and having your face covered all the time so um it would be a period correct problem to have i just need to be able to watch that for you know, health reasons but um yeah that was i can actually see a lot better than i thought i could so that's super helpful it probably could have been a few inches longer but honestly i don't think it's that bad yeah, I think it's about right. 
When I put my head up, it, it may be a slight, yeah, that's about where I think of the original Vin right there. Yeah, it seems right. Yeah, I think it's good. It is quite fun to throw back though, so that's going to be really fun. I'm going to show visitors down all the time so I can flip it back, because that's actually quite enjoyable. Probably shouldn't be getting joy out of, you know, the morning dress, but eh. Hopefully it won't be too hot, because, yeah, all black. Really hoping it's not like super duper hot. Well, I guess we'll find out. I mean, it's the end of October, but this is also Texas, so you never know. Lately, it's been in the 50s and the 90s in the same day, so could do both. Could be very comfortable in the morning and then and then miserable in the afternoon. We I don't know yet. Should be interesting. Glad I have the fan just in case. Uh, handkerchiefs are always nice because you can dip them in water and they are very nice when you put them underneath your dress and then it's kind of like air conditioning basically you put it around your neck I do that a lot in the summer so I'll have both of those things that's why these three things were priority bonnet was priority because I need that for a full morning ensemble fan and handkerchief were necessary to keep cool on the off chance it's super hot those are the two things I need to keep cool. So when I'm out there and it's 105 degrees, um, which I have done events when it's 105 degrees and probably a little warmer. I don't always have a thermometer with me to see how hot it is. But those are the two things I need. I need a handkerchief to get wet and to wrap around my neck. And I need a fan. And that's, I can pretty much get through 105 degrees cooking in a hot kitchen on a wood stove pretty easily with those two things. So if I can do that, in 105 degrees, I can handle being in all wool and all black in like 80 degrees, I think, with the same thing. I, like, I feel like that's a pretty equal um, trade-off, so I think we'll be okay. But thank you so much for joining me today as we made our little morning accessories for 1867. If you're new to the channel, please like and subscribe to our channel so you can see our videos that are usually out every Monday. Um, other than that, have a fantastic week, and I will see you back here on Monday.